Hey, let us talk about ontology again. This time, let us continue our grim journey and have a look at the Shinigami, the death gods of the Japanese mythology. And of course, when you're an otaku like me and you hear the word Shinigami, you might immediately think of anime like Death Note or Bleach. However, the Shinigami in Japanese mythology are quite different from the depictions seen in modern media. In the hidden corners of Japanese culture, these beings serve as the bridge between life and death. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? They are not more characters from fiction, but are rooted in centuries of belief, embodying the inevitable end that await us all. Let's dive deep into the origins, realms, and their profound influence they have had on culture and storytelling. But as always, before we are continuing our grim journey, please like this video and subscribe if you've not done so already. So, with that being said, let's get us started and begin with the origins of the Shinigami. The Shinigami's origins are shrouded in mystery emerging as a result of Japan's evolving understanding of death. By the way, the word itself is a blend of Shi, meaning death, and Kami, meaning God, which points to their grim purpose. But, unlike the gods of creation, Shinigami do not bask in the glory of the sun or the sea. Instead, they are the silent shepherds of souls, guiding the departed toward whatever lies beyond. Before the Shinigami became a distinct entity, death in Japan was ruled by a mix of spirits and gods. Shintoism, the native religion of Japan, had no singular god of death. However, the arrival of Buddhism introduced more structured concepts about the afterlife, complete with deities overseeing death and of course, reincarnation. And as Japan opened its doors to the West, the ideas about death evolved even further. The Western Grim Reaper blended with Japan's native beliefs, leading to the birth of the Shinigami as we know them today. But Shinigami are not just bringers of death, they act as guides ensuring that souls reach their final destination. And the further we go with our grim journey, you will see, that will become a common trait across many different cultures and beliefs. Their appearances are as varied as the stories that speak of them. Some are depicted as haunting skeletons, others as really beautiful figures. They might appear in traditional Japanese attire, blending the familiar with the supernatural. But, unlike the Grim Reaper, who is typically portrayed as a singular, terrifying figure, Shinigami are often seen working in pairs, and this collaboration signifies the balance needed to maintain the natural order of life and death. And, of course, each Shinigami has a unique appearance and role, but all share the duty of guiding souls to the afterlife, yet another common trait across different cultures and beliefs. Now, Shinigami exist beyond the concepts of good and evil. They are impartial beings who follow the laws of life and death, and their interactions with humans are significant, often occurring during pivotal moments. But, unlike malevolent spirits, they do not seek to harm, nor do they act as protectors either. Their sole responsibility is to maintain balance. By the way, Shinigami challenge humans in the ways that test their morality or their domination. In these moments, I like the choices we make in life, and our death is always in the shadows, watching closely. As Neutral forces, their interactions are not driven by personal desire, but by an unwavering commitment to their duty. Of course, Shinigami possess various mystical abilities that allow them to fulfill their solemn duties. 
Their powers include seeing the remaining lifespan of individuals, influencing events from the shadows, and traveling between the world of the living and the dead. However, despite their abilities, they are not omnipotent. They cannot change a person's fate or extend their life beyond its natural end. Yet another common trait. One of their most intriguing abilities is the power to see when a person is destined to die. This ability helps guide them in their role as custodians of souls. Jinigami are also able to subtly influence the world of the living to ensure that the natural order is preserved. But, of course, this influence must always respect the balance of destiny and free will. And Shinigami are diverse, so they are reflecting many facets of death itself, so they come of course in different types. They can be solitary wanderers, a part of a more organized structure of the afterlife. And if you know Bleach, I guess you know the Soul Society. So, here are some common types. First, we have the typical Grim Reaper, influenced by Western imagery. Some Shinigami take on the role of the Grim Reaper, cloaked and carrying a Sith. They are the personification of death, solemn and unwavering on their duties. Simple enough. Up next, we have Tricksters. Yeah, not all Shinigami are serious. Some enjoy playing a little trick on human, misleading them or testing their virtues. But these playful spirits can be both mischievous and dangerous, and sometimes even leading individuals to untimely ends. That is a problem. Up next, we have the ruling deities. Certain Shinigami hold authority over their debt and the afterlife. And these powerful beings decide the fates of souls, balancing justice and mercy in their decisions. And lastly, we have something more unique, human-born Shinigami. Some Shinigami are actually human souls that, through karmic punishment, are transformed into death gods. These spirits often have unfinished business and serve a darker purpose. And if you remember, in one of the previous videos, I talked briefly about Meng Po, someone, a woman, who was supposed to reincarnate but couldn't due to the loss of her husband. So something has held her back, similar with the human-born Shinigami, even though with the human-born Shinigami here it is more a punishment. Now, there is one famous story involving a Shinigami and a man on the brink of despair. After losing everything, he meets a Shinigami who tells him his time has not yet come. The Shinigami explains that life is like a candle and a person's lifespan is determined by the candle's flame. The man, fascinated by this revelation, begins using his knowledge to heal others, manipulating the presence of the Shinigami to prolong life. And who knows the Greek story about Sisyphus? Knows something like that never ends good. So, the greed took over and the man tries to trick the Shinigami. And of course, the consequences are dire as he is shown his own candle, burning dangerously low due to his interference in the natural order. To make it short, the story ends with the Shinigami offering the man a chance to extend his life, but as always, with a great cost. So, this is the world of the Shinigami, a realm filled with mystery, beauty and the eternal balance between life and death. From their stories, they remind us of our own mortality, but also of the choices we make that shape our lives. In the end, the Shinigami are more than just death gods. They are a reflection of complex nature, of life and the ultimate journey we all must take. Let me know what you think, what happens after our timely 
end. Now, venture with me into the shadowy realms of mythology, where hidden connections and forbidden knowledge await. Together, we will uncover the dark secrets that lie beneath the surface of these ancient tales, revealing that there is much more to mythology than mere stories. There are profound truths waiting to be discovered. So, join me on this journey and let's explore the mysteries together. Thanks for watching.